D-Lab on the bench this weekend, we got something a little bit different. It's not a tube amp, but it does have two tube devices in it. This is a Rotron Voodoo Valve. It was brought to the shop because it got dropped. And when it got dropped, the display went out. So I'm expecting the worst. Probably a bad display tube, but we'll check it out and see what we got going on. Stay tuned. Alright, to check out this problem with the display, luckily you do not have to pull the entire cover off of the back of the unit. You can gain access by removing the face. So all the nuts come off of the controls and there's six screws. Then you're simply going to remove the face, swing it out of the way. I'm going to plug in the unit. Remember this thing only runs at about 9 volts so you can't get shocked in here. So it is on and the first thing that you want to check is right behind the display you're going to see a little yellow as I call it a jelly bean capacitor. Alright, so that capacitor should have I keep my meter where you can see it. Hold on, let me reposition this. Alright, so as I stated, you're going to look behind the display unit and there is the capacitor. You're going to measure across these two leads. I got my meter set up. Sorry guys, just one man show here. Go across the cap and you should see 28 volts and we do. Okay. Sometimes that capacitor will short and kill the display, but that is not the case here. We have a dead display. So if you take a close look at the display tube, you'll see right there, there's a little white spot. As I stated, this thing had been dropped, so obviously this guy lost vacuum somewhere. There's a hairline crack on the glass display. So we are going to change out the display of the Voodoo Valve. So unless you have a very expensive desoldering station, the best option is to cut the leads underneath of the fluorescent display. So I'm going to snip all the leads. We're going to pull this assembly out. And then all the old leads that are poking up, you're going to take them out like teeth. Gonna heat them up with your soldering iron and remove each pin, and then I'll clean the holes up with some solder wick. All right, so I have the camera in a little closer so you can see. We know that this display is shot, so you're not gonna hurt anything here. Okay, just clip this guy out. These are fine little leads; they cut real easy. Just make sure that when you're cutting, you're only cutting those leads and not something behind it. Or you could introduce a whole new set of problems. So these circuit boards guys are pretty fragile. They're a dual sided board. So you want to be careful when you're working on it. Because it can easily be damaged. Alright, there's the old guy. Let's get the new one in. But first, obviously I have to clear all these holes and then we'll be able to put the new assembly on. Alright here comes the monotonous part guys. Get yourself some nice quality Chemtronics solder wick and you're gonna go down the line where all those little pins came through. You're gonna see the foils on the top and then you're gonna switch to the bottom. You wanna pull as much solder out of those as you can and then you're going to take either some fine needle nose or sometimes even wire cutters and pluck out the old pins. Alright, I'm working my way down the board. I just put the solder wick up against the leads and pulling the solder out of those connections. Okay. Do not try to do this guys without using solder wick. Because at the same time that it is removing the solder, it's also 
heat sinking those foil traces a little bit because if you try it without the solder wick it'll raise the foils and then game over okay once you get the solder out of these holes then you're gonna take and push down on the pins okay the pins need to be pushed through the holes and they'll poke out through the top remember the display came in through the top you can't pull the pins through the bottom so you need to push all these guys down and then you get on top side and you pull them out. So here's a little tech tip. You can take a flat blade screwdriver, heat the pin up, and push them down with the screwdriver like that. Then you'll be able to get around the top and finish the operation. So this is the most tedious part, but your efforts will be rewarded with a working display. All right, you can see the pins poking up. So I like to grab a pair of wire cutters since they're so fine and I can pop them guys right out. All right, I'm gonna go through and remove them clear the holes with some more solder wick and then we're ready to put the display on. Alright it took a while but I got all the holes cleared clean things up with alcohol I'm gonna flip it over and put that fluorescent tube on. Okay to put these displays in it's kinda of tricky especially if any of these pins are bent so I start them at an angle and I just take a screwdriver And I align the pins one at a time. And she'll start dropping into place. Just got to be really patient. It's a very fragile operation. And you don't want to manhandle it because these tubes break really easy. got all the pins in. And now you gotta carefully rock her in until they seat. All right, now comes the easy part. Getting your solder back in. All the work is on removal. So it doesn't take a lot of solder. These are little flow through dual sided connections so as you solder it on the bottom she'll pull right through to the top won't be long now hopefully this is all that the uh, little voodoo valve needs so I've got my soldering iron set at around 650 using some 30 thousandths Kester solder. Zing right down the way here. So I'm inspecting my work. I missed one there. A couple of these don't have an adequate amount of solder. That's because I had the camera in front of me trying to show you guys all the fun. We're looking good now. All right guys, moment of truth. I've got the power switch plugged back in. It's in the on position. Here we go, cross your fingers. Whammo! Look at there. You wanna watch as that scrolls across, make sure that all the little elements come on, which it did. Excellent! Alright, it's test time. I have my audio generator as a source since as you guys know I'm not that great of a guitar player and we're going into a D-Lab amplifier that is still in the works. This amplifier is going to be called 7. <laughs> I'll give you a little close-up on the amp here in a little bit but first off let's just make sure that the voodoo valve is doing its thing. Alright, so this is volume and this is tone.
as though it's passing the signal just fine and of course the display is green and beautiful so I'm very happy with the outcome of the Voodoo Valve. So as you can see by this video that changing that display is kind of an intensive little task but it can be done. All it takes is a little bit of patience, some good solder wick, and a magnifying glass. That always helps. So I'm sure a lot of you are saying, hey, I thought you only worked on tube type equipment. Well, guess what? There's two tubes in the Voodoo Valve. There is actually a 12X7 preamp, and that display is a fluorescent tube. So I'm still in my wheelhouse. So before I go, I promised you guys a sneak peek on the newest D-Lab amp being developed. This is the Model 7. Why is it the 7? Because every tube is 7 pin. We've got three 6AV6s. These are the preamps, my inverter, and it drives a pair of 6AQ5s, which are also 7 pin tubes. This amp will be featured soon on upcoming D-Lab videos. We'll see you then.